Amid the surge of COVID-19, a message of hope as vaccines arrive in Texas. That will allow us to uh, be well over a million people who will be vaccinated. What the governor's saying about the vaccine timeline and his message for Texans worried about virus-related shutdowns. Texas workers wait for relief as the state sits on $2 billion of coronavirus relief funds. How a neighboring state took a different approach to get money to people who need it now. A Texas doctor and a group of philanthropists find a new way to test for COVID-19. How they're slowing the spread and getting students back in the classroom. Hello and thank you for joining us for State of Texas. I'm John Engel in for Josh Hinkle. We begin with good news, nine months in the making. Texas facing yet another surge of COVID-19 cases saw the arrival of the first doses of a vaccine this week. A UPS driver delivered the first doses of Pfizer's COVID vaccine early Monday to Methodist Dallas Medical Center. For many folks, this delivery was a sign of hope for a turning point in this pandemic. No one feeling that more than the guy behind the wheel. I lost a relative three weeks ago three to four weeks. So it's, it impacts, as I said, it, it impacts all of us. And so let's, uh, let's, let's let the healing begin swiftly. The first vaccinations were administered on Monday morning. The first person to get vaccinated in Dallas was an employee who cleans in the emergency room. Governor Abbott touted the state's plan to get the vaccine to those who need it. And he also had a message for Texans worried about virus related shutdowns. Wes Rappaport has that story. Governor Abbott says he expects more than 1 million Texans will be vaccinated for the coronavirus by the end of the month with wider access to immunizations by March. Texas has a distribution system in place to make sure that we're stepping up and doing everything we can to save lives. The governor reiterated he will not impose any new coronavirus related shutdowns in the state. People's lives have been crushed and their their pocketbooks and their ability to pay the rent and put food on the table uh, has been harmed because of the uh, uh, shutdowns. And so, no, we will not have any more shutdowns in Texas. In the state house, Representative For Price, an Amarillo Republican, says Texas has bounced back from supply chain problems. The state is doing everything possible to, you know, address all the challenges. While Austin Democratic Senator Sarah Eckhart says the state's response has lagged. I'm happy to say that there is a statewide distribution uh, system. Uh, it has been largely dictated by the CDC. Thank goodness. State health leaders are cautiously optimistic as we get ready to turn the calendar to 2021. The vaccine and the uh, antibodies are a ray of hope. They are not yet the answer. They will be the answer as time goes on. What is still the answer is exactly what you're wearing on your face and exactly what we're doing here in terms of distancing ourselves and, and practicing those uh, infection prevention. I'm Wes Rappaport for State of Texas. The governor said he does plan to take the vaccine, but he said that he has not yet gotten the dose because he'd rather see healthcare workers get it first. Here's a look at who's eligible to get the vaccine now. State health officials finalized the list earlier this month. It includes doctors and nurses working directly with COVID-19 patients, as well as clinical staff and custodians at those hospitals. Then it expands to staff at outpatient care facilities and urgent care clinics. Employees at pharmacies, public health departments, funeral home workers, and school nurses too. As for the general public, last week, Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar said he expects people will be able to get vaccinated at pharmacies by mid-March. Dr. Anthony Fauci said he thinks it'll be available to the masses in late March or early April. But Governor Greg Abbott says the vaccine could come faster in Texas. We asked him whether the state would make the vaccine available to the general public before March. He had a different take on the timeline and the definition of general public. Here's the deal. You're using this generalistic term, the public. Uh, the, the public includes seniors in nursing homes. The public includes people over the age of 80. The public includes people over the age of 70. The public includes people over the age of 60. And so, yes, there's going to be uh, a, a lot of people. The public includes school teachers and people like that. Yes, there, there will be widespread distribution because remember this, both Pfizer and Moderna will be increasing the volume of production that they have. But also, we do expect that before we get to March, there will be additional 
vaccine providers. You heard the governor mention the Moderna vaccine. It could play a key role in getting doses to more areas of Texas. The Moderna vaccine doesn't have to be kept as cold as the vaccine made by Pfizer. It also can be shipped in fewer doses, so state health officials say that may make it easier to send the vaccine to rural communities in Texas. The state expects to receive hundreds of thousands of doses of the Moderna vaccine in the next week. Texans helped Moderna test that vaccine. Alyssa Gord introduces us to an Austin woman who took part in the clinical trials. For Rachel Ellsbury, the first shot was in June. The second one came 28 days later. She was a participant in phase two of Moderna's clinical trial. Participants got either a placebo, a 50 microgram dose, or a 100 microgram dose. You have to be okay with needles and being weighed and poked and prodded. After the shots, her arm did get sore and she felt achy for a little while. I'll take those side effects any day of the week than contracting a disease that could potentially kill me or make my life difficult for the rest of my life. Ellsbury doesn't know which she received. Despite testing negative for COVID-19 throughout the last year, she recently tested positive for the antibodies. So she thinks she got one of the vaccine doses. They are proven safe and effective. State leaders expect to get more than 460,000 doses of the Moderna vaccine next week, which will help them ramp up distribution. They are 94 and 95 percent effective. And in the terms of vaccines, that is absolute gold. Ellsbury will be monitored through the summer of next year for this trial to learn more about how long antibodies from this vaccine last. I have called it hope and a syringe, and and that's very much what I feel like it is. For State of Texas, I'm Alyssa Gord. The president of the Texas Medical Association is encouraging people to get vaccinated when the opportunity comes for them. Dr. Diana Fite received her first dose of the Pfizer vaccine Wednesday at a hospital in the Woodlands near Houston. Dr. Fight says she hopes when Texans see physicians get the vaccine that it'll boost their confidence in getting the shots themselves. But she said there are groups of people who should consult with their doctor before getting the vaccine. Among them, those with weak immune systems, that includes people who have had an organ transplant or have cancer, pregnant or breastfeeding women, also people who have food and medicine or vaccine allergies. Even as the vaccine arrives, COVID cases are still climbing across Texas. But Governor Greg Abbott sounded a hopeful note at his Thursday news conference, touting the potential of drugs to treat patients battling the virus. These are life-saving antibody therapeutic drugs that can be uh, put into people who already have COVID-19 and help them recover and help keep them out of hospitals. One thing that we can and must do as we speak right now, and that is to use every tool that we have to reduce hospitalizations in the state. The Texas Division of Emergency Management opened a new therapeutic infusion center to deliver those life-saving drugs in southeast Texas. The center started accepting patients Thursday in Harlingen. A similar infusion wing opened last month at an alternate care site in El Paso. Good news for Texas students struggling with virtual learning. A new way to test for the virus has some schools nearly eliminating the risks presented by in-person classes. We're not big enough to survive this. We don't have that kind of cash reserves. Texas businesses wait for relief as the state waits to spend billions in relief funds. How another state found a way to get that money to people who need it. The locks come off the gates at the Capitol grounds. Why some lawmakers say the reopening doesn't go far enough. 